Well, another thing we did was get a world collection, what you folks did in Mexico, another inheritance from the Mexican program, we got a world collection of uh, rice varieties. And uh, from that, we, we began selecting certain ones. And what we were looking for was a short, stiff drawed upright leaf variety compared to the tall, droopy leaf things that fell over when you gave them a little fertilizer. And we found from Taiwan that we had this two, two varieties, Dijo Wu Jen and Ijotsi, which were short, stiff drawed with a single recessive gene for shortness. And we crossed those with the tall varieties that had disease resistance and were adapted to the tropical conditions of, of, uh, of uh, Asia and uh, uh, tropic, uh, tropical and subtropical conditions. And the result was, in a very short time, uh, we had some stiff drawed upright leaf varieties because of the fact that, that tallness is dominant over shortness. And so in the F1 generation, you cross the tall one and the short one, they're all tall. And uh, then in the, in the F2 generation, three quarters are tall and one quarter are short. And so we picked those short ones. And so in, in a matter of three years after we made that initial cross, we had one that we called IR8-288-3, which later became IR8. And it, well, we were able to get, under experimental <coughs> conditions, ideal <coughs> conditions, uh, we were able to get up to 10 metric tons per hectare, when the average yield in the Philippines was 1.2 metric tons at the time we went in there. And that revolutionized the uh, that started the revolution in, in, in rice. And of course we continued to make crosses and to get better and better varieties, more disease and insect resistance to go along with the plant type and uh, better grain quality from a standpoint of appeal. And you uh, had an order of priorities for each of these. You had to get over one hurdle at a time, right? Yes. Where the major emphasis was yes. given. We were, we were pretty lucky on that first cross, uh, which uh, uh, Pete Jennings made the cross, Hank Beecher selected the <laughs> IR8 out of the, out of the population, and uh, T. T. Chang, a Chinese uh, a geneticist, uh, brought the variety from Taiwan, told us about it, so we, we learned uh, about that. And so they all played an important part in, in the development of this. From there on we went. And we got as fast as we could, we got these varieties out to other countries. And they, of course, we were able to multiply them and select them, and it took hold very fast. And as I mentioned yesterday, I think, in a conversation that uh, 18 months after we introduced IR-8 uh, in, the, in the Philippines, 1960, 64-65, uh, 50% uh, uh, of the people there in, in, in Luzon uh, with irrigation were, were growing uh, the, the shop stiff crop variety. And uh, that's pretty fast. And then, of course, we went on to other ones that were much better than, than that. Uh, but this, in this cause, they say today, the Erie people say, that there are 700 million people who are being fed today that could not have been fed had we not uh, sure. had this uh, new kind of rice that responded to fertilizer that, uh, that would uh, put their, their growth into grain rather than all into straw. And 